uh, racing dirt late models. And what does that mean? Um, basically, the car that you see here is um, what they classify as a dirt late model. Uh, we race it on a local Saturday nights. Um, it tracks like Hilltop Speedway and uh, Muskingum County Speedway. Um, do all the maintenance on it Monday through Friday pretty much and uh, load it up and take it racing at least one night a weekend, sometimes twice. What kind of money is involved in being a race car driver locally? Um, there's actually quite a bit that goes into it. Um, a lot of people you know, don't comprehend that the, uh, the winner is where you get into a lot of your cost. Uh, that's basically when you take the car apart, you replace all the parts on it, basically make everything new so that it uh, basically has the longevity to get through the season. But uh, just through the winter cost, I mean, you have motor repairs, which those usually run anywhere from about 5500 up to where upwards of eight or $9,000. Then you've just got the normal wear and tear on the car, bolts and shock components that you replace. Basically, just to get it ready through the off season, I mean, you could spend upwards of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Now, do you have a sponsor that helps with that money? Um, a few, not very many. I mean, uh, it's pretty. Rough. That's probably the hardest part of racing, especially on your local Saturday nights. But I think a lot of people and a lot of businesses don't really grasp the concept of what it takes for the local guy to make it there every weekend. Um, a lot of Monday through Friday work at our normal jobs and uh, and the real honesty to do it at this level um, it takes a lot away from probably the family life the financial family life um, my wife is very supportive of what we do uh, it's been in our family for many many years I mean it's kind of any of the extra money that we do have pretty much goes into the race car I mean it's like I said, it's a very family atmosphere. We all go to the track every weekend together. I mean, it's not, it's not something that I just do out here and, you know, that distanced me from my family. So why do you do it if it costs so much money? Ah, uh, man. Your addiction? Yeah. Um, when I was six, my father raced before I was born. And uh, when I turned six, I had gotten a go-kart and did a lot of practicing. And when I turned eight, we started racing go-karts. Um, raced up until I was 18 in the go-karts. Got out of it, said I was going to take some time off. I think we took three and a half months off, and I bought my first race car. And then uh, pretty much after that, I mean, it's we've raced nonstop since I was eight. I don't think we've taken more than about three or four months off from any form of racing that we've been in. Why do you love it? Uh, I ask myself that question quite a bit, actually. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just I have the drive and the desire to do it um like the winters are really rough on me i mean it my wife even gets on me a lot about being depressed just because i don't i don't have that there um spending time with my father working on it growing up i mean it's just it's a way of life there's really i mean honestly since i was born there's nothing else we've ever really done i always joke what i'm going to do someday when i do quit racing and and we never really come up with much so hopefully that day's quite a ways away yet now, on the night of a race, how do you prepare? Um, the preparation actually starts for me Sunday. We, if we race on a Saturday night, preparation starts on Sunday. Um, we bring the car home. We unload it out of the trailer. Uh, we bring it in here. We take the whole entire body off of the car, and the first thing we do is we wash everything. We take the tires off. We wash those. And then basically we bring it back in here. We put it up on the lift, and the first day or two, Basically, all we do is we run what we call check the bolts on the car. Um, every bolt that holds anything on the car gets a wrench on it to make sure that it's still tight. Um, once we check all that stuff, then we run it through a setup procedure that we have to make sure that all of our suspension parts and those sort of things didn't bend just from the normal wear and tear on the track. Or if you have any collisions, you want to check over stuff like that. And then uh, about Wednesday, Thursday-ish, we start reassembling the car, putting the body back on the car, making any changes that we want to at that time. And then uh, usually late Thursday night, we try to do a lot of the finished stuff so that we don't have a lot of running around to do Friday evening and try to take it easy. But um, a lot of times, especially just being here by myself right now, it, uh, 
it's usually going into Fridays and then we, we basically do our final scale out on Friday. We scale the car, make sure all the setup's correct and then we put it in the trailer and then Saturday morning is pretty much you you rest a little bit in the mornings, get prepared for it and then uh, we leave leave the house about noon on Saturday morning and get home anywhere between about 1 and 4 in the morning. What are your thoughts and feelings for the adrenaline when you're in the car and for the light turns green, what's going on in your head? It's actually really weird. Um, the nervousness that you get before, when you're sitting on the grid getting ready to go out, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, it's the same feeling. Um, I, and the whole time, you know, it's more nervous, but you're trying to focus on trying to look ahead and kind of put some sort of game plan together on what it is that, you know, you're trying to accomplish and how you're going to get there. And, but as soon as you roll out onto the track, it's like all that goes away and, and you really, you just get focused to the point that, I mean, you, you don't, you don't hear the sound of the motor anymore. Um, you don't feel the roughness of the track really, but yeah, it, you know, the, after the, about the first half a lap, that's about, once you get through the first turn, the nervousness is usually pretty well gone by that point, and then it's, it's pretty much down to business after that. So are you any good, Ryan? Um, yeah, I think we are. Um, we're really looking forward to this year. We, uh, we drove for another gentleman the last few years, had a little bit of success. We haven't won a feature yet, and uh, we went out on our own two years ago, and um, it was kind of an eye-opener like I said we were driving for another gentleman he owned the car the trailer we helped out with a little bit of the finances but not very much and then we went from having nothing to we had to buy the car the truck the trailer and then we had to you know maintain it ourselves and it it took us it took us about three four five nights even to really get good with the other car um, then we got hooked up with uh, Bernheisel race cars out of uh, Pennsylvania they build the laser chassis that we have now and uh, we only ran at six races last year and had very good success with it in the six races that we ran at last year. So we, we really, we did a lot of right things this winter. Uh, we didn't cut any corners, spent the extra money where, you know, a few years ago we may have, you know, may have said, well, we don't really need that. But uh, we're really, really for about the next three or four good years, we want to tackle this and see, I guess just see how good we can really be because the, my biggest fear in life is to be 60 years old and say, you know, what if I would have done this differently? You know, what if, what if I would have spent that extra money, you know, when I had it, when I was working, where, where would that have gotten me? You know, where, and, and that's the biggest thing that I, that's probably my biggest fear in life, I guess, is being that old and asking myself what if, and that's something that I'm, I'm really trying not to do.